All right, let's draw some conclusions from yesterday's lab that you guys finished up today on elastic potential energy. So as we take a look, we know elastic potential energy is based off the stretch or the compression of something that can be like a spring, a rubber band, a slingshot, a trampoline, anything that can stretch and compress. What we notice is when there is zero displacement, there is no potential energy. Once we displace it to one, it is gaining potential energy. So as the spring gets stretched, it gains potential energy. So the more that we are to pull it apart, the more potential energy it will have. Now something different from a rubber band, a rubber band we can stretch and get it to gain potential energy. But we can't really compress a rubber band. At that point, it has no tension to it. However, with a spring, if we compress it, as we see in this third image, it also gains potential energy. So therefore, the more that we stretch or compress an elastic object, the more elastic potential energy the object will have. Now, there is one other factor, kind of how in gravitational potential energy, we have both mass, mass and height as a factor. We also have here the spring constant. And as we notice, as we make the spring constant thicker, the amount of gravitational, or excuse me, elastic potential energy also increases. So the thicker, the spring constant, the greater the elastic potential energy. Think about something that you are more familiar with, such as a rubber band. If you have a really, really thin rubber band, the exact same size as one that's a little bit thicker. Think about which one will shoot further and which one actually contains more energy. The thick rubber band will always have more energy than the thinner rubber band. So the two factors that affect elastic potential energy is how much they are stretched or compressed and the thickness of the object. Now, let's for our follow-up question. So here we're looking at two items that are electrically charged. If we take a look at these first two, we notice that we have positive charges, which remember when we have positive charges, that will cause these two objects to repel. As they repel one another, that's gonna cause this spring to compress. When we have two opposing charges, Recall that that causes those to attract. As those attract, that's gonna pull the spring out and it's going to stretch the spring. Any time that the spring stretches or compresses, it is gaining elastic potential energy. So as we look at our answer choices, how does the elastic potential energy change to each of the springs? it will increase in both. Reasoning why, both a stretch and a compress increases the amount of elastic potential energy. All right, keep rocking it today in preparation for your quiz tomorrow. And hey, Reese, pay attention. Robbie, are you on track? Silas, I know you're paying attention. Thank you. Thanks, guys.